Now let's imagine we have an atom, and it can has basically three oscillators, one for each axis of motion. We can, and let's say we give it four quanta of energy. Right. So the four is kind of arbitrary here, but we got to start somewhere. Yeah. So let's yeah. say arbitrarily do four. It's small enough we can count them all. So we've got the three oscillators, x, y, and z, and how can we put them? How many ways can we put four uh, quanta in there? Wow. Okay. So we just need to uh, start counting. So should we start with the x there, Paul? Yeah. So we could put four quanta here and have these two at the ground state. So okay. in that case, it'll be moving enormously along the x-axis, but not along the y or the z. Okay. So that's one. That's one possibility. Or we could put all the quanta in y. Yep. And one can imagine we do it all in z as well. Indeed. Yes. So that's given us three possibilities. But is that all? Yeah, well, then we can start splitting it. So maybe we'll do only part of it in x. Yes, yeah, so let's say you have uh, three in x, one in y, zero in z. Yep. And then we can run the changes on that. Three, zero, one. Put them here, one, zero. And so we a lot more possibilities now. Wow. So that actually gave us six possibilities to add to it. So we're now up to nine ways we could do it. Yep. But there's even more. Yes, there are. So go down. Two, two, and zero. Two, one, and one, and so on, and so, so on, on, and count them all out. And we've ended up with 15 different ways in which we can distribute four quanta between, in one atom, between its three directions of motion. Yep, and you can go through and count through them all yourself, although we've got the cheat sheet here for you. So. Now, in, we're not, not talking about the subject called statistical thermodynamics, um, the total amount of energy, which in this case is four quanta, is called the macro state. Yep. And the microstates are the different ways you can distribute those quanta. So in this case, these are the microstates. So we have one macrostate, four quanta, and in this case, 15 microstates. Right. So in this case, you can imagine you have a certain amount of energy, which is the four quanta, and you want to figure out how many different ways can our object you know, ha express that energy. And it turns out 15 under this circumstance. So, okay, good. Okay. Now... The fundamental assumption we're going to make here is that if you do have an atom, <coughs> it will constantly be changing microstate. Um, it probably wouldn't happen if this was a single atom by itself, but you've got to imagine this atom is one in a vast collection of other ones. It's going to be bumping off other ones. And in this whole chaos of things bumping off other ones and vibrating and moving around, it's going to switch microstates. And the fundamental assumption we're going to make is that in this whole chaotic process of thermal motions, that all microstates are equally likely, and it moves between them at random all the yep. time. So that actually gives us enough to work out what happens in a situation like two blocks put together. Let's imagine we've got, instead of two blocks, we've just got two atoms. Okay. Each of which are in the three directions before, and once again we've got four quanta. But now we can share those four quanta between the two atoms. Ah, so we have the same amount of energy going to be shared in two atoms, so there's going to be a lot more states in this case. Yeah. Many, many different ways to share that four quanta worth of energy. So it might be like a molecule where the two are actually bound together, so yeah. the energy can go from one to the other. And once again, we're going to assume that energy can, all the different microstates, as long as they have the same total amount of energy, i.e. four quanta, all up, all the different microstates, for example, all the energy in one, all the energy in the other, are equally likely. Yep. So once again, we can add it up. So we could have, for example, all four quanta over on this atom and none over there. So I've got all the energy and you've got nothing. So we've already figured out that's 15. Yeah. Or you could have all the energy and I could have none, which is so down the bottom. That's another 15. Here. Yeah. So there's, in this case, there's 15 possible states for me, but only one state for you, everything in the ground area. Yep. Whereas the other way around, it would be 15 for you and only one for me. Right. But we can also work it out, let's say we had three. You can add up the total number of possibilities for distributing three, just like we did for four. Yep. And it turns out there are 10 of them. Right. And you've now got one quantum. All oh, right. So, so it's pretty easy. You've got three states. I've got here. three different places I can put mine. Yep. Yep. So... The total number of states, and there are 10 possibilities for me and 3 for you, so you have to multiply them together. So for each of my states, you can have each of your 3 states, so 10 times 3 is 30. Oh. And now we go down to 2 each, and the number of possibilities for here turns out to be 6. You can count them yourself if you don't believe that. And you've also got 6 and possibilities. Got six as well. But that means we've actually got 36 Put between six us. together, so that's the one that gives us the most possibilities, okay? And symmetrically, symmetrically down, down the other direction. And as we add all those up... And we get 126. Yes. And if you do a histogram, you can see that the, um, the number of microstates for all the different cases is most if I have two and you have two. So it's most likely that we share the energy. Yes. But it's not guaranteed. No. So this is, we're beginning to get some clue of how we can understand physically the fact that the heat tends to equilibrate. 
Uh, we're assuming that none of the microstates is more possible than any of the others. It's just that there are more microstates when we have equal amounts of energy. So I've lost more chances, you've gained more chances as I drop the number of things. But the product of the two, when you multiply them together, is most when we've got about the same. So if I were to go through and take a block, which happened to be one atom, mm -hmm. and another block that happened to be one atom, and I put a, a small amount of energy in between them, then it's quite likely they'll end up at the same temperature, but under this state, because of quantum mechanic having a lot of uncertainty, it's not actually guaranteed. But of course our blocks typically are made of more than one atom. Indeed. So let's try and work out what we'd do if we had lots of atoms.